Okay, I call this the 24 card trick, okay? And I believe this is brand new to the world of card magic. So if you were here, I would have you point to any one of these 24 cards. So let's say you point to this one right here, okay? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn away and hopefully angle it enough for you to see what it is. And then at the very end, after recording my video, I'll discover whether or not I was successful. Okay, so I'm going to turn away now. And so I need you to remember whatever card you're looking at. Okay, so you got that? Okay, remember that. Okay, very good. I'll just set it right here. Now, since we know where it is, it's on the top here. Uh, why don't we go ahead and just lose the card somewhere in the middle. Okay, so somewhere in the middle, your card is found. Um, and what we'll do from this point on is I need you to concentrate really hard on your card value, the suit, and the color. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to deal out the cards into piles, kind of like we do for the 21 card trick. And then I want you to use your intuition to divine where you think your card is. Okay, which column is it in? Okay. Now, of course, you can't see the faces and you will never see. That's the amazing thing <laughs> is this entire effect is done face down. Okay, so uh, which column do you think it's in? And, and don't tell me, by the way, just think, just think. Think to yourself, I think it's in this column or that one. Okay, you got it? Okay, so very good. Um, why don't we also deal out into three piles? And while concentrating on your card really hard, see if you can determine which column your card resides. This one, this one, or this one. Okay, let's see. Um, I'm getting some feedback, I think, from you as to where you think it is. And I'll go ahead and gather those cards accordingly. Um, let's go ahead and also deal out into four piles. Okay, here we go. Okay, so which column contains your card now? Column one, two, three, or four. And I'll see if I can tap into your psyche okay i think um yeah i think that will work out well for us and then finally we're going to deal out into six piles whoa six piles <laughs> if i can fit them there we go one two three four five six i'm looking at the camera making sure they all fit Okay, wow, look at that. Okay, so we have six columns of four cards. Okay, and for a final time, see if you can divine where your card is. Which, which column? One through six. And I will do my best to divine where I think your card is. Okay. Let's see, I think your card is not over here for sure, or here, or here, or here. I no, it's not over here. Oh yes, it's it's in among these four here. Okay, well let's see. Uh, nope. Uh, nope. And no again. Oh, it leaves one card. Let me just check. Oh, yes, indeed. This, I am sure, is your card. So for the first time, what is your card? And I won't even know if I'm correct because I didn't see the identity. You'll know because you, you saw the card. So I'm just praying that that is the card that you saw, okay? Now, if I messed up and this isn't the card you looked at, 
uh, will probably be able to figure out what I did wrong. And I'll be sure to show you how to do this effect where you won't make a mistake. I sure hope I didn't, but I believe that's your card. So that's what I'm going with as an answer. Okay, I'll just hope that that's right. Okay, well, how does this effect work? Okay, um, well, it uses the main principle driving this is the stay stack principle, the stay stack principle. Okay, so the stay stack principle, I have a separate video dedicated to the stay stack principle that you may want to look at, and I'll add a link to the video in the description below. But it deals with, let me uh, spread those out a little bit better, maybe. Um, it deals with mirrored constructions, mirrored packets, okay? So for example, if we just focus on card value, this packet is, quote, mirrored, because on the outer ends, we get a pair of aces, twos, threes, fours, all the way to the center, which are a couple of queens. So this is a mirrored packet. When you have such a packet, you can do some amazing dealing that will not fundamentally destroy the mirrored relationship of the cards, okay? So for example, for every divisor of the packet size, so here we have 24 cards. So two divides into 24, uh, three, four, six, eight, of course, and 12 even. <laughs> so you can deal out the cards into any of those number of piles and then randomly stack from left to right or right to left. And there's some other stacking that I show on my channel and it will not undermine the mirrored relationship of the cards. Now the cards will be moving around. There's no question. Okay, so they really will be moving around. Um, but the mirrored relationship of the cards will not be altered in any way. Okay. Um, in fact, maybe why don't we go ahead and just let's kind of show you that here. So I'm dealing out into uh, two piles. Okay, and then maybe we'll do a four. Could do three as well, like I did in the presentation. Okay, very good. And we can stack from right to left or left to right. We can also do like a leapfrog stacking. That's one that I've done before. Uh, why don't we do three? Now, you would think that all of this scrambling of the cards would, you know, essentially destroy any relationship among the cards. You really would. But the stay stack principle says that is not the case. This will still be, quote, mirrored. Okay. And you can see that it is. The cards have moved around a bit. Like here we have eights now. Seven, six, fives, all the way back to the queen still. Okay. Those are still there. But it's still a mirrored packet. Okay, well, because of that, let's say you happen to know the identity of the bottom card. So the eight of diamonds. And the spectator has selected a card that is placed on top, the eight of spades. Okay, so think back to what I did. I had you randomly choose a card. You looked at it. I'm hoping it was the what, ten of hearts. <laughs> Um, and then, unknown to you, I had information about the bottom card. Okay, so I'll talk about that in just a few minutes in the tutorial. So you have the spectator's card on top, and then you know something about the bottom card. Okay, and then if you remember to kind of supposedly bury their card, since their card is sitting on top, it's kind of a suspicious place to have it. So I did this false triple cut, okay? So once again, on my channel, I actually show you how to do that. You don't have to perform that, but it's a way to ostensibly mix the cards, but in fact, uh, everything's been put back to where it was before that false triple cutting was done, okay? So this is a fairly easy one to learn, okay? 
Okay, so this, so where we are then is the spectator's card is on top. I know something about the bottom card. Okay, so um, so what we'll do is we're going to um, perform all of this now face up so that you can see what's going on. Okay, so I dealt out into uh, two piles like this. In fact, really to uh, kind of mix these cards well, why don't we deal out um, into two piles again? Okay, because I, I want the cards moving into very different positions than they started in. Okay, and then maybe now we can do a three. Now the key is uh, the stay stack principle says the mirrored relationship among these cards has not been harmed in any way. Okay, and then we can just stack these. Okay, so at, and then I dealt it into four, and then eventually I dealt into six. Do you remember that? One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so remember your noted card. In fact, I've already lost track of <laughs> the performer's noted card and the spectator's card, but it actually won't mess us up, actually. Um, okay, so uh, thinking back, I honestly can't remember. Uh, let's say the spectator's card was the ace of diamonds, and then our noted card was the ace of spades. Okay, so those may be switched, but as you'll see, uh, it won't undermine the point that I hope to make here. Well, just look at the relationship between that card and this one. What do you notice? Okay, so let's say, you know, this is the card that you remembered. Okay, so Ace of Spades is the one you noted. So from its position here, we can see that it's two columns to the right. Now, because of the mirrored relationship of the cards, their card is going to be two columns from the left. So now we know their card's over here somewhere. And then all you have to do is identify where this one is in this little packet here from the bottom. And that will tell you how far their card is from the top. Well, it ends up that this one is actually on the bottom. So that means theirs must be the top card. Okay. Now, maybe just for practice, because you can see what's going on. Let's say this happened to be the noted card. Well, it's in the same column here. So theirs will be there. But this time the five of spades is second from the bottom, which means the five of diamonds will be second from the top. Okay, so if you just kind of look at the structure here, you can get a sense as to, okay, so if I know one of these, like the nine of spades, then I know it's over here in the far left column, and it's going to be second from the top because the nine of spades here is second from the bottom. So that helps you arrive at the nine of diamonds, its mirrored mate. Okay, so if you just kind of look at the symmetry of the cards when they're laid out this way, you'll realize that if you just know which card is in a mirrored relationship with the spectator's card, you can identify their card once you know where your noted card is. Okay, so that is kind of the, uh, that's part of the key. That's part of what's going on with that effect. Okay, now, uh, of course, I didn't do the performance face up. I actually did it face down. Okay, now one reason for doing that is because it wouldn't seem all that impressive if everything's face up and you suspect that I noted the identity of your card at the beginning when I turned my head away right? So I thought, oh, I'll do it face down. And it's probably a more mind-blowing way of doing this effect in the first place. Okay, so I started with a packet of 24 cards. Now I know the identity of the bottom card. Okay, that's important. Okay, so we kind of like started, you know, at the very beginning of the video, the cards were like this, I had to point to a card and so forth. Okay, now I happen to know that the bottom card from the start is the Ace of Hearts, okay? 
And so, um, so we go through here, you choose one, you take a look at it, okay? And then I put it on top. Then I did my false triple cut, which just puts everything back to where it was, right? But the key is their card and my noted card are in a mirrored relationship. The only remaining element to the secret of all of this is how in the world was I able to keep track of the ace of hearts when all of the cards were face down? Okay, that's a very good question. Well, what I did, which is something I've done, I think, once before on my channel, uh, but it's kind of commonly done in the world of card magic, is I made a little mark, and you can probably see it. Uh, yeah, well, I think you can see it. So I made a little mark, uh, angle it. I think it's easier to see on this side. I made a mark on this side and this side, like a almost like a little pinhole. Just made a little dent there, a little dent there. Um, I suppose you could use a crimp of some sort if you wanted, but those are easier to detect. So there's a little dot there. I think you can see it. Catch the light and a little dot there. So no matter how you uh, orient the cards, I'll, I'll see a little dot in the top left. Okay, so that corresponds to the Ace of Hearts. Well, what that does is it enables you to do this entire effect with the cards face down, which is unbelievable, actually. <laughs> so anyone, so any spectator seeing this is just going to be blown away because uh, you didn't see the card they noted, so you have no idea what it is. And then on top of that, the cards are never turned face up. Okay, and then, you know, we randomly stacked these, and then we went into three piles and so forth. And so what's happening here is um, all of the cards are moving around in a special way because of any mirrored characteristic that you've imposed on it. But really the only portion of the mirrored packet that we're focused on was the original top card and the original bottom card. Those are the only ones we care about. What the other cards are doing has no effect on anything. We don't really care. Okay. <laughs> and then you can stack from left to right, or right to left. Okay. Uh, we can do into four piles, as you know. Uh, with random stacking from left to right or right to left. Why don't I show you the leap frog stacking? So here the spectator is supposed to be focusing on which column they think their card is in. And then you can pretend to be getting feedback from them. So here, here's the um, leap frog stacking. This pile leaps over its neighbor, lands there. This one leaps over its neighbor, lands there. And then you can randomly stack these. Okay, And believe it or not, that will not undermine the mirrored relationship of our card with that little mark on it and the spectator's original noted card. Unbelievable. Okay, and then we can deal out into uh, six piles as before, if you would like. Uh, we can actually deal out into, you know, two, three, four, six, 12 would be kind of weird, I guess, but, uh, but I decided to finish with the cards in this configuration. Four rows, six columns. I suppose in some ways it makes identifying the location of their card a little bit easier. And so from this point, I have you focus on where you think your card is. Now, I already know where your card is. How's that? Well, right here, okay, I'll pick it up slowly here. Let me pick up these three here so you can... This card here has the little... See, a little pinhole right there. I'll put it back exactly where it was, okay? So because this card is my noted bottom card with this mark is in a mirrored relationship with the original top card, which is the one you saw, my card being here on the far right column means yours on the far left column, okay? And then also, my card is two from the top, which means yours must be two from the bottom. So this must be the one that you saw. 
which it is. It's the king of clubs. Okay. Okay, so that's all of the uh, secrets revealed. 